I'm building a custom Firebird guitar and there's only a couple of major jobs to do before we can get this thing into finish. However, there's a few little jobs that have mounted up over the last couple of weeks. So I think now is a good time to get those sorted out before we take any major steps forward. Oh yeah, and there's the companion ukulele build as well. Forgot about that. Okay, so we got the frets in last time and they're all looking really, really nice. There is a little bit of finishing off work to do on them, but like I said last time, I'm gonna leave that closer to final setup so that I'm not having to do things twice. But before we do that, there are a couple of little jobs that I want to get out of the way just to put my mind at ease, really. And I'm also hoping that by the time I've done some of these, I will have had a delivery, which means I can start working on the uke as well. So anyway, to start off with this episode, a few of the things I want to do are, when I glued the body wings on, there was a little bit of misalignment in places. So I think the first thing I want to do is get those sorted out. So it's a case of getting the bobbin sander on them and just smoothing a nice clean transition in there. Next up, I've drilled these out for one set of pots and had another set of pots delivered. So all the holes for the pots are slightly the wrong size. So they need opening out as well. And the first job I'm going to do is just to fill in some of these little gaps on the side of the fretboard. But before I make a start on that, I'm going to make sure that I've got all of the fretboard nicely covered up because we don't want to be getting that messed up. I'm going to be using some of this water thin super glue in this process and it kind of wicks everywhere. I will imagine it's still going to get under the masking tape to some extent, but it will keep the worst of it off. Okay, and to fill these little gaps, just like you can see there, I'm just simply going to take a tiny little bit of sawdust that's come from sanding down this wenge. And I'm just going to make a little pile. Then I'm going to take some water thin super glue with one of these little precision applicator nozzles on. And I'm going to try and just get a little drop like that. Probably a little bit too much there. Onto that sawdust. And just move on to the next one. And if you haven't seen this trick before, it dries hard almost instantly. So I'm gonna carry on and do the rest of these. And I'll get back to you when I've finished. You don't always get these first time, but we'll give these a file down now and see how they've gone. And if we need any more in there, we can just go over it again. And hopefully you'll be able to see there, or not see, which is more to the point that to the naked eye, that's all but disappeared. So we call that a successful job done. So the next quick job I want to do is just open out the holes for the control pots. As I said before, I'm using a pot with a bigger shaft than I'd originally planned for. So I need to just make these holes a little bit wider. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna use these twist drills, but you need to be careful with these because they can grab on wood and they'll chip it and split it. So. As I've done before many times, I'm just going to run this backwards and go at half mil increments until I've got it to size. And 
I'll just reinstate the slight chamfer that I always put around these holes. Now, while we're looking at this bit of the guitar, um, I had a conversation a week or so ago about whether or not I was going to use the stop tail piece that I had planned or whether I was going to put a Vibrola on. Now, I had a lot of comments on this one, um, and as always, it kind of divided opinion. And there were some very good points for putting one on, and there were some really good ones for not putting one on. And in the end, I've decided not to put one on. So in terms of the actual Vibrola, didn't have a problem at all with it. But a couple of things occurred to me and were pointed out as well. Firstly, the Vibrola is kind of trapezoidal, maybe? But anyway, it's got square ends on it. And that just left a kind of a goofy looking wedge of body protruding from the end, which I didn't think really worked very well. And secondly, I went to a lot of trouble to put these stripes in. And I just think it'd be a real shame to cover them all up with the great big chrome Vibrola. So I'm just gonna go with the standard bridge and tail piece. Okay, so hopefully that's cleared that up. But while we're on the subject of bridges, I've actually had a delivery of the little bridge for the uke. And as you can see, it's kind of like a hardtail Stratocaster style bridge, but with only four saddles. But it's important that I had this before I went too much further with the uke, because I needed to know this dimension, which is, it's about 60 mil, which is ideal, because obviously I don't want the center block in the uke to be as wide as the center block is in the guitar. But what I didn't want to do was cut it narrower than the bridge. So now I have this, I can start to do some kind of figuring out of exactly what dimensions the center is going to be. And from there, I can work out how big the wings need to be. So this is actually quite a vital component of the uke build. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to very quickly tidy up these areas on the bobbin sander to get the work out of the way that we need to do on the full size guitar today. And then we can start to do a little bit of work on the uke. Okay, so now we have the actual bridge we're going to be using, we can flesh out what is at the moment quite a limited plan for this build. The crucial factor we needed to know was the width of the bridge, which is, as we just said, 60 mil. Now, this is printed out at 65% of the original scale drawing. So logically, the center block for this would be 65 millimeters because the original block is 100 mil which is great because that leaves just a little bit of meat either side of this bridge. So what I'm going to do is just measure, now I'm going 32 mil there, because I'm allowing a little bit from my pencil lead. And with that done, I can then draw in the lines for the center section. Now I'm not gonna make a full set of wooden templates for this build. I don't really feel I need to. Um, what I will do is I'll make some copies of the relevant sections of this, which are the center block, the wings, and the headstock. And I'll use those paper copies for these three sections. And I will only make a wooden template for the headstock because that is the one area that I'm actually going to route. The rest of them I will do on the bandsaw and with the bobbin sander. So basically, it's time for another very quick tracing session.
Okay, so the headstock template is glued onto a little bit of MDF. Just waiting for that to dry before we can cut that out. I've got the paper template for the center section of the body. It looks ridiculously small when you look at it like this, but this has got all the information I need at the moment. So it's got my bridge line and my center line. And I've got my two paper templates for the wings. I don't need those just yet, so I can put these to one side for the time being. And in terms of the main build, I think we've had quite a good day, even if we've only done some little bits and bobs. Um, we've got all those little gaps filled in down both sides of the fretboard. We've managed to get these holes the right size for the potentiometers. We've got all these transitions nicely smoothed in as well now, so it's the shape it's going to be. Just needs cleaning up a little bit and we've made a decision about what's happening or not with the Vibrola. So that's all great. Next thing is, I think, probably to mount the bridge and the tailpiece, but I'm gonna save that till next time because we've done quite enough for this episode. And it's actually getting a little bit cold in here at the moment. It's June, but it doesn't feel like it, hence the jumper. So as always, like if you've liked, subscribe if you haven't done so already, and I'll look forward to seeing you in the next episode. Thanks a lot for watching. Bye-bye.